Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. On today's video we are doing a witchy haul, specifically witchy home decor as well as witchcraft supplies that I got for my most recent trip to Cornwall and Glastonbury. <music> For my birthday this year, I made my way to Cornwall to go and see the Museum of Witchcraft and Magic. It was absolutely phenomenal, 10 out of 10, would definitely recommend. I've made a video, it'll be linked in the description box. While I was in Cornwall, I was also able to see a lot of magical places and go to lots of magical and witchy shops, and I also had the chance to stop into Glastonbury in Somerset and get some of my magical supplies while I was there. Today I really wanted to go over the things that I got because most of them are from small independent businesses or individual creators and I know that many of you are interested in supporting magical creators for yourself so I'm going to leave all of their information in the description box, any social media, any websites, anything that I can find for them so that you can go and follow them, like their posts or purchase from them for yourself if it's something you feel as though you can do. I think it's really important for me to say here that you do not need to have a lot of magical items, a lot of magical books or a witchy looking home to be a successful magical practitioner. The importance is your energy work, your focus, your intentions, the work that you put into it is more important than the items that you have or the way that it looks. That's really important for me to say here. I get a lot of books and a lot of supplies because this is my job. I like teaching, I like sharing, I like offering people reference books that they can work with, and to do that I need to read the books firsthand. This isn't something everyone needs to do or that everyone has to do. And when it comes to supporting small businesses, you don't necessarily need to buy things from them. Although supporting small businesses and creators financially is incredibly powerful, there's lots of things we can do for free. If we have social media, you can like a post, share it, comment on it, interacting with their content is incredibly powerful, and it can do wonders for promoting small businesses and allowing them to thrive and grow. So with that being said, let's get into some of the items and don't forget to check all the links in the description box. So first up, we went to Tintagel. Now Tintagel is well known as being the believed birthplace of King Arthur. Yes, the King Arthur from Arthurian legend. And while I was there, as I was walking down Tintagel High Street, I saw a witchcraft shop, which completely took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting it at all. And I believe it's a fairly new shop. It's called The Witch in the Wilderness and the outside looked absolutely amazing. The inside was just as beautiful. They were offering tarot readings, they had clothes, they had magical supplies like candles, sprays, oils. It just looked so magical. And while I was there, I did pick up a few things. The first thing I got might be a little unconventional. You might not expect it from me. I actually bought a hat. <laughs> now, backstory to this, I am incredibly pale. You might have noticed this in my videos. I also have a middle parting, which means that in any amount of sunshine, my skin burns instantaneously. And so I really need hats. And when I saw these, each of them with a different symbol of the tarot cards, I knew I had to get one. These were not that expensive at all. And they had a few. So they had the Empress, they had the Devil, but they also had the Star, and then they had the Moon. Now the Moon is the one that I got, and they're actually really well made. This is like a really sturdy print. You can't even feel the difference between the print and not the print, which to me shows something that isn't going to come off just in five minutes. Because that's something I have noticed with printed hats especially, is that because they're exposed to the sun and to water a lot, they come off dead easy. This one feels like it's really sturdy, though obviously I don't know that 100% for sure. So a little unconventional, incredibly useful. I already wore it on like the entire trip away because it was really sunny for some of it. So very useful for me. And I just love having like witchy clothes clothes and witchy accessories. I don't know what it is, I just really like it. The next thing I got I fell in love with instantly and it smells amazing. I can smell it from here. Oh, it's actually soap. This is from Bliss Botanicals and it's handcrafted soap and they had a few varieties available. They were called things such as Moon Magic, which is this one. They also had Forest Fairy and Goddess and all witchy magical scents and I just adore these soaps. They just look beautiful. Doesn't this look amazing? It's got the herbs on top and then if I actually lift this out, it's got the moon and stars on it. That's so cool. This one in particular is Moon Magic. It smells so good. It is orange, geranium, and ylang-ylang. It's 128 grams, and they are vegan soaps. And 
I'm so excited to use this. I'm always after soaps that I can use in my magical practice. I do enjoy setting myself up for magical practice by having rituals that I carry out beforehand. The whole idea of being able to drop myself into a magical state of mind by the things that I'm doing. So for some people, they will drink a certain drink, they will wear certain clothes, they will bath beforehand, they will put on certain ritual music, they will go into a certain location. These things allow us to step out of the mundane and into the magical. And while this is really great if you have access to these things, sometimes you just want to wash your hands. And so I really enjoy getting myself ready for spells and rituals, especially if I've had a busy day, by just washing my hands at the very least. If I can't have a full ritual shower, I will wash my hands. And I really enjoy working with the moon now. I know in the past I've said that I didn't really do it that much, but I've started to get back into it and I've really enjoyed making that connection again, deepening that connection. It isn't a requirement for spells and rituals to work with the moon, but I've really enjoyed doing it recently. And so this is is gonna really help me. I think this was eight pounds, I believe, but for beautifully handcrafted small batch soap, that's really good and I enjoy supporting companies like this. So I'm very excited to use it. Now I can finally use it too because I've been back for three or four days now. All I've wanted to do is use this soap, but I knew I needed to film the video so I couldn't. So this is now gonna be used. And then the last thing I got from the Witch in the Wilderness was actually a gift. My mum very kindly got this for me when she saw it at the till, and it is a little notebook, and I'm not sure if you can see what it says, but it says, magical shit I need to do. And if that isn't accurate, I don't know what is. <laughs> I am one of those people where I will have a giant list of things I need to do, and the minute I do one of them, I will instantly forget everything else I need to do, and I will go and edit. And then I realise at like 2am that, oh, oh, I actually needed to do a dozen other things and I didn't. So this is gonna be incredibly useful to me. What I'm thinking of doing with it is to actually put some stick-on magnets on the back and stick it on my fridge because then it's in eye line. I'm not gonna forget anything. Incredibly useful. And this was really affordable. I can't remember exactly how much this was. If I can remember, I'll stick it on the screen somewhere. But they had a few of these and they're just cute little things. I think they're just really nice gifts. In England, we call them stocking stuffers. You know, the kind of things that you give at Christmas where they're just small little gifts that add up that are just thoughtful things that you think someone else might like. They aren't crazy big or crazy expensive, but they're just really thoughtful gifts. And I think a lot of people in the magical community could benefit from something like this, because I think a lot of us are the same in that we can't remember what we're doing when we get distracted. We are like magical magpies. We see something shiny or we see the moon and we are gone. <laughs> so this one is gonna be incredibly useful for me. I then found myself in Glastonbury. And although I'd only been there a few months beforehand, there was a shop I had never been into before. Now, technically, they have been in Glastonbury for a while. They used to be in the Gauntlet, but have recently, I think just this year, moved onto the High Street, and they are called The Coven. Now, they're on social media as The Coven Glastonbury, and oh my goodness, the shop is absolutely amazing. Rather than being one shop with one person's items inside, it's more like a marketplace where there are 60 small businesses and creators that have their products inside the shop, and different pieces are going to be from different creators. They have pretty they have badges, they have magical homeware, magical jewellery, magical skincare. Upstairs they also have some clothing and they also have a tattoo studio and a piercing studio where I believe they have their own artist but they also bring in other magically minded tattoo artists to do guest spots there and believe me I was so tempted. I went on their social media, I saw an artist was there that I absolutely loved but unfortunately I had just missed them but who knows in the future I might be back because some of the art just looked absolutely amazing amazing. I did see a lot of prints that I fell in love with, but I couldn't get everything. So I ended up getting one thing. And then when we saw one item in particular, my dad ended up getting it for me for my birthday because we just couldn't leave it behind. So for myself, I actually got a tarot bag. Now this is actually for a tarot deck that is later on in this video, but I really enjoy having tarot bags rather than using the really big boxes that the decks usually come in, especially when the box is far bigger than the deck. I don't like the cards just sliding around inside. I'd much rather keep them in a bag. And I saw this and fell in love with it. It has the different tarot cards actually on the bag, which is just so beautiful. It has a little drawstring here that allows you to just cinch the bag in like that. And it is just beautiful. 
absolutely gorgeous. I knew I had to get it the minute I saw it. This was, I think, eight pounds, seven or eight pounds, which is really good actually for something that is handmade. This is definitely made by someone on their sewing machine. And I really like supporting people who do things from scratch like this, rather than companies who just mass produce their products, potentially in not particularly nice conditions for the people who are creating them. So very happy with this. They had lots of different prints available, but I fell in love with this the minute we walked in, so I just had to get it. The other item that we got from the Coven Glastonbury was actually a wall plaque. We walked around, we saw it, and we thought, wow, not only is it stunningly beautiful, it is also such a coincidence. My dad ended up getting it for me because I'm pretty certain he said something along the lines of, it's too much of a coincidence, we have to get it. And it is a plaque that says, Hearthwitch. Now, this was not a custom order or anything. They had a lot of different varieties of plaques. They had green witch ones, they had kitchen witch ones, they had hearth witch ones. And the minute I saw this, I thought, how can I not end up with something like this? And so it is going to go pride of place in the background of my videos. It is so stunningly beautiful. And I'm so, so happy now that hearth witchcraft is becoming a much more popular style of practice. It is now something that is more readily found. People are talking about it a lot more. There's many hearth witches now out there who are sharing information about their practice. And it makes me so happy that a style of practice that I find so much joy in, other people are finding joy in as well. And so this is just amazing. The detail is stunning like all of these stars are so beautiful it is just so well made it is from an artist called agni prasada burning their name is just here and it has a little hook on the back so it's gonna go pride of place on the wall behind me i'm so so chuffed about this it is just so beautiful and i just love getting to see hearth witchcraft being shown more you know you see it alongside green witchcraft and kitchen witchcraft now whereas before you just didn't and so i'm so happy that so many people are finding joy in it enough that small businesses are now creating things like this it's so nice the next shop we went into was the white rabbit in glastonbury and i got myself a tarot deck now this is a deck that i've been after for a long time or at least it feels like a long time and that is the forest of enchantment tarot now the box is huge it's absolutely massive and inside is a full-size guidebook it is big big and not only is it big it's in full colour, <laughs> like actually full colour, which is kind of bananas to me because most books that you find are not in full colour. So you have the entire tarot card on this side. This isn't just artwork, these are the tarot cards. And then on this side, you have a little bit of a story relating to the card. And then you have the meaning at a glance, as well as a closer look at the card at the bottom. They have different techniques for how to read the cards. And honestly, this is just a beautiful guidebook. The cards themselves are gorgeous. They are shiny with no borders, which I'm so happy about. I hate, I hate cards with borders. I always cut them off. So the backs of the cards look like this. They are beautiful. And the cards look like this. They are just stunning. Like, I genuinely cannot express how stunning these cards are. The cards themselves are this size, which is really manageable for me. They're a decent sized deck without being too big. They shuffle really nicely. The cards don't stick together, which is usually a massive problem for me. I'm just gonna pick out a few of my favorites. So I've just picked out a handful of them. So we have, I mean, how can you not love that? It's a badger. It's so cute. The artwork is just unbelievably beautiful. I've already used the cards three times, I believe. I used them like the first day I got them, I couldn't resist. And really, really gentle readings. I have some cards where they will kind of just throw the answers at you and they're like, if you don't like it, deal with it. And then you've got some cards that are kind of harsh. These are instead a little bit softer spoken, but they still get the point across, so I really like that. And this is actually the deck that I got the card bag for because the box itself is so, so big. And I don't really like keeping cards in big boxes. That's my only downside with it, is that the inside of the box has just a hole 
this hole is where the cards are meant to sit and then the book fits on top of that and I don't really like the way that's done. I, I would much rather there have been a box inside the box so that if you don't need this big box or you don't want to carry the box around, you aren't having loose cards. Instead, you would have a smaller box where you can take the cards with you. So I think that's just a little bit of a design flaw that I'm seeing more and more on more modern decks. But all in all, with this little bag, I can actually put it inside the box. So if I keep it open at the top like that, I can actually get it to fit inside this original box. If I took everything in, the book then can fit on top of it. If I can get it in like this and then it will close. So you can do it. I've got a little tassel sticking out the top. You can do it inside the original box. I just feel like you shouldn't have to. But generally, really enjoy this deck. The last shop I went into was Sons of Asgard. I really enjoy getting supplies from them. So I went and got a few top ups on things I've already used as well as getting a few new items. In terms of top ups, I ended up getting a giant bag of German chamomile. I use German chamomile in so many different things. I use it to bring good luck and prosperity into my workings, whether they are money and good luck spells, or whether it's adding that energy into spells that could use a little bit of additional good luck and prosperity. I also use it in protection spells for protecting good luck and prosperity as well. I also enjoy using it for adding a little bit of solar energy into things. And honestly, it's one of my favorite herbs. It might actually be my favorite plant because I just love the smell of it. If you've never smelled fresh chamomile. It is in a league of its own. It is beautiful. Dried chamomile is nice. Fresh is even better. But at the minute, I do not have a great space for growing things. I'm really going to try and grow my own. But for now, I get them from Sons of Asgard. I can smell it through the bag. <laughs> Oh my god, it smells amazing. The other thing that I topped up on were actually their blended synergy oils. Now I got three different versions of these. I got an apple, a rowan, and an oak, and I use these to work with the Celtic tree oam. Now many of you know that I'm really passionate about working with trees. I always have been. I probably always will be. I love working with them not only in my day-to-day -day life, but also in my spells and rituals, and so I find I go through these oils a lot. I think the last time I did some really hardcore workings, I went through an entire bottle of oak and apple, and so I had to get two of each just because I knew that I was going to run out of them. If you're ever looking for them in the shop, this is what they look like. This is the apple version. They're really cute, smell amazing, and yeah, really looking forward to adding these into my collection. And now I can actually put them somewhere else other than on this table. The last two items that I got were both sprays. The first is an oak spray. Now oak is actually my birth tree and so I use a lot of the plant and the energy of in my spells and rituals as a kind of tag lock. It attaches that working onto me as well as helping to ground me and root me into the world that I live in. I use it a lot in both my magical practice and my day-to-day -day life and so I had to give the spray a go because I use the oil so much as well as the leaves, the spirit, the bark, and the wood so I thought it would be a really useful addition. Now for me I don't necessarily just use oak when its associations align with my working. Because it is my birth tree I use it in all workings to really help strengthen, ground and develop my connection to that working and the workings connection to me. So I plan on using this to spray around my space and around me before I do spell work and ritual to really help set me into that intention. This kind of thing is also really useful as a sort of ritual action before spell work and ritual to help drop you into a magical state. If you do something, as I mentioned earlier, time and time and time again before spell work and ritual, the mere action of doing it drops you into that magical state because you are automatically prepped and primed because of the action that you're doing. So super useful for me. The other one that I've never tried before is called Beyond the Veil. And this spray is gonna be used in a very specific setting and that is for dream magic, divination, and very specifically, scrying. I do find, as most people do, that when life gets busy, connection to the spiritual world is a little bit harder to find, especially when we do live in chaotic spaces, in busy areas, or we simply have kids and busy lives and a busy job and lots of things going on. So this spray for me is gonna be used specifically when I wanna drop myself into a state that allows me better connection to spirits, to ancestors, to servitors, to any kind of allies, entities, and deities that I'm planning on connecting and working with, specifically 
through scrying and dream magic. That's the plan. I got a 100 mil in this, and I believe this one is a 30. So this one for the 100 mil was 15 pounds. This one is six pounds 50, which are honestly really reasonable and very looking forward to using both of these. So those were all the witchy homeware and witchcraft supplies that I got for my trip to Cornwall and Glastonbury. While I was there, don't worry, I did go into all of the bookshops. I have a full video about the witchcraft books that I purchased. I will be sure to link it in the description box if it is already out. I would love to know what your favorite witchcraft shops are. Feel free to let us know in the comment section. I think it would be great for sharing the love and giving people inspiration for where they can shop next if they would like to, because so many witchcraft shops are not spoken about that much. So I'd love to share a little bit of love in the comment section for some of your favorites. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, feel free to post a comment down in the comment section. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I try to post magical content every single week. So with that being said, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.